Thanks, Rory. We've got uh, 10 minutes for questions. If we've got any questions. The uh, navigation uh, systems in trucks, the driver training, the regulatory uh, requirements of drivers, the fatigue management systems. A lot of things have happened in the road transport system over the last couple of decades which have made these large trucks very, well, a lot safer than ever before. It's just a sheer fact of life, there's more of them on the road. Uh, the only thing that sort of hasn't improved is the road train network and V double network in Australia. We, we have not got hardly any one more road than we had when it was first drawn up. Uh, my question uh, as far as uh, doing uh, uh, the money needed to just maintain the current uh, road network system is barely maintaining what we've got. Uh, is there any uh, outlook as far as increasing that road train network in the future to keep up with the uh, increased demand? Uh, I'd have to say that uh, unless the government was to increase uh, charges, the governments will increase, increase charges, I doubt there's going to be an expansion of the network. Uh, I know that uh, uh, the government here in Canberra is looking at the National Freight Network and they're not adding even major uh, parts of the network uh, to what is designated the network. For example, uh, in Sydney, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, the Sydney Harbour Tunnel, uh, the uh, Port of Newcastle are not on the National Freight Network. So getting commitment from the Commonwealth to expanding roads outside that is, I think, uh, uh, a tough ask. Uh, so what we're particularly looking at is if that's the situation, and, and it is the situation, how do we get people to come together where there is mutual benefit uh, from private investment to get this better access? Uh, we would like to think that uh, road provision should become more, the provision of roads should become more normalised uh, like other the other infrastructure sectors that Infrastructure Australia looks at, for example, energy, water and communications. Now, you don't see the government out there sinking lots of money into energy projects or lots of money into communication projects or lots of money into water projects, well, particularly in the, in the major cities. Uh, then our view is that roads need to move into that more normal provision where users pay a fee, that gives signals to both investment and efficient use of the asset. So that's, this is part of the direction we think that we'd like to go. This is really to demonstrate through these pilots that that change, that move, is possible and that there will be winners from that move. Okay, a question here. Just wait for the mic, it's not far away. I had two questions. Um, one was how much has transport of cold storage, um, particularly I, I guess live product for seafood if I understood com correctly, some of it's live, is that correct? Yeah. How much has that been coordinated across commodities so that industry is actually working together to, to invest in infrastructure? Sorry, um, in my discussions with uh, my industry, um, they spend about 90% of their day trying to sort out air freight issues. Um, and I would imagine there'd be some collaboration um, in Tasmania mainly because it's got to get from Tasmania to, to Melbourne or Sydney. Um, but I suspect it's dog eat dog, really. It's got to get, there's a limited amount of space and uh, you know, they've got to get it. In terms of working together to try and understand what we need, um, I guess that's part of my presentation. I don't see a lot of evidence of that happening and I think there should be, yeah. And if I may, the other questions um, towards the port. I'm wondering how much analysis you've done of demand for the port. If we improve the rail system, um, 
are you are you confident that the product will come to fulfil the capacity that you you say is available in Brisbane Port? Uh, the projections, for example, of growth and container usage. Um, I had a sense that they may have been based on world demand and I not so much sense of whether Australia has the capacity to fulfil that. Uh, yeah, we, we do a lot of work on demand. Um, uh, in terms of any infrastructure project we, we invest in, obviously, before we invest in it, and certainly anything we push on a wider scale. Um, we've been pretty modest in terms of our forward growth projections. You know, containers, 5 to 7%. Um, Growth historically, it's 11 percent, uh, and um, and in terms of our underlying volume growth, we've been going at about 4 percent per annum. Um, that shouldn't really change. Australia is a trading economy; it needs access to ex export markets. Uh, well, I think we've seen today there's plenty of upside in the agricultural industry. There's certainly a fair bit of upside in the resource industry, and I can't see a world where we start to reverse heavily um, uh, our. Uh, um, our globalisation model, uh, where uh, you know there's a dislocation between uh, primary produce areas, areas of value add, and areas of end consumption, that's not going to change materially going forward. It probably will continue to globalise um, even after the little blip through 2008-2009. So, uh, no, look, you know, I think um, it's it's a it's pretty well studied area in terms of forward freight growth. Um, it's fairly well known, and uh, I think it's. You're never 100% certain, but we're pretty certain. Uh, last question. Uh, Patrick Cohen from Fisheries. Just an observation first. Um, I just congratulate ABS to put on sessions like this. I think it's very good. I think um, just a comment. I mean, this, this freight issue, I'm in the seafood industry, obviously. We didn't have woolies and coals here and talk about freight distributions, hubs just, you know, domestically and that whole transport system. We've got a greater requirement now to have fresh food, you know, with 15 days shelf life in the retail stores in Australia. Um, we've now got a situation where importers can deliver a, a more larger shelf life into Australia because of our freight network in Australia. We can't actually get it to Woolies and Coles because of our own distribution chains because we've got such extended chains in Australia. So, you know, we do need this investment. I suppose the question uh, to Lindsay is how are we going to address the data issue? Because I looked at your um, analysis and from that most people would say seafood's on the decline. But I can tell you from seafood perspective, we can't export at the moment because we can't get access to freight distribution chains. So we've had to actually put all of our product, all our prawns now go domestically because um, we can't get them in an international domestic freight system. <coughs> so the data can actually make you look like you're not doing something, but it, it is a completely different situation. Yeah, the data across the board is, is an issue. That was a very high level uh, study that um, I presented today. But I think your point is, is an excellent one. And um, if you look at the air freight um, exports of fisheries products, it would indicate that it has been declining in terms of value. In terms of the share of fisheries products exports, air freight has become more important. So you looked at unprocessed, looking at all fisheries products exports, 65% was exported by air transport in 2011-12. So the air freight supply chain is very important for fisheries products. Our concern is that um, freight is really considered as a lower order priority compared to passenger travel through key infrastructure facilities in Australia. And what you're indicating there would be consistent with our concerns. And if we can uh, move forward in terms of understanding better some of those efficiency issues, undertaking some of these studies, which I think was very uh, a, a major constructive step forward in Victoria, then we can work towards um, improving the efficiency of those supply chains. And I think it's very encouraging that you've got uh, fisheries products available for export. Okay, um, you join me in thanking our four speakers.